Okay, this is number 22. Um, it's an example over the homogeneity of proportions test. Here's the problem. According to a recent survey, 32% of Americans say they are very likely to become organ donors. A researcher surveyed 50 drivers in each of the neighborhoods, each of three neighborhoods, to determine the percentages of those. Let me adjust here to the other part of the page. Those willing to donate their organs, to show up right, the results are shown here. At alpha equal 0.01, test to claim that the proportions of those who will donate their organs are equal in all three neighborhoods. Okay, so we're trying to see if the proportion of people in neighborhoods A, B, and C that will donate their organs is the same. Okay, the claim is going to be that the three proportions are equal. So these are my observed values that are given. These are my totals. I could also total up my rows here. Okay, and I can get a grand total of added up these six numbers right here. So that's one thing you want to do is, is get your, rum, your uh, row sums, your column sums, and your grand total. So I've got, the, I've got my uh, null is going to say that the proportions are equal. Proportion one, in other words, the proportion in neighborhood A equals proportion 2, the proportion in neighborhood B equals proportion 3, the proportion in neighborhood C that are going to donate their organs or would be willing to donate their organs. That's the claim that they're equal. The null is just going to be that at least one of these proportions is different. So we don't want to say that they're all different. We just want to say that at least one of them is not the same as the others. Find the critical values. Find the critical values on the um, homogeneity of proportions test. You take, you take your, uh, you have to find your degrees of freedom, which means you take your number of rows minus one times your number of columns minus one. Now be careful. When you count your rows, don't count your total columns. Only count the actual data of observed values. So there's two rows of black numbers here. So you're going to go two minus one. There's three columns of actually data that was given. One, two, three, A, B, C. So do three minus one. So you have one times two. Degrees of freedom will be two. So then you go to your chi-squared table. And you look on the back of your chi you look on your chi-squared table. Down the left side, you look for degrees of freedom of two. Up at the top, you look at your alpha value. What did the problem say the alpha value was? 0.01. 0.01. So you're gonna go 0.01 at the top. You're going to come over, you're going to come down, and they're going to give you a critical value. According to my notes, that should come out to 9.21. That looked right? Okay, so 9.21. Let me draw a little picture up here. It still goes with, with part B. Chi square distribution looks something like that. Out here at 9.21 is our critical value. Anything to the right of that is our rejection region or our critical region. Remember, the chi-square chart starts at zero. Um, our chi-square distribution starts at zero. So next, we're going to do our um, test value. If the test value is bigger than 9.21, then we'll know to reject the null. So to get your test value, you have to figure out all the expected values. The expected values, remember, are found by doing the row sum times the column sum divided by the grand total. One thing that's nice about these, though, is the column sum is always the same number. So it's 50, 50, 50. So that makes things go a little bit quicker. So I'm going to find, um, actually going to find six different expected values, because I have six observed values, the numbers in the black. So I'm going to find expected value 1, comma 1, expected value 1, comma 2, meaning row 1, column 2, expected value 1, 3. These are my observed. I'm figuring out my expected. Expected value, um, let's see, row two, column one. Expected value, row two, column two. And expected value, row two, column three. So all I do to get that, to get expected value one, comma one, I take this, the total, the row sum, of column one, times the row sum of column, of row sum one times column sum one. So I do 50 times 63, then divide by 150. So if I do that, I get 20. For each 
sub 1, 2, I take my first row sum of 63, times my second column of 50, divide by 150, that also comes out to 21. And what you're going to find out is that these top three expected values are all 21. For row 2, column 1, I'm going to do the sum of row 2, 87, times the sum of column 150, divided by my grand total, that comes up to 29. And you'll find out that all of these values will come out to 29 if you take the reason being, you're always using the same row sum, and then the column sums all match. So now to actually get your expected value, or excuse me, your uh, <coughs> test value, chi squared, you're going to take your observed value minus your expected value. You're going to add those together. Excuse me, here's the formula. Let me draw it out for you. It's the sum of the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected, like that. So in this case, you're going to do 28 minus 21, which would be 7, squared divided by the expected, which would be 21. Next, you're going to do 14 minus 21, which would be negative 7, squared divided by 21. Next, you're going to do 21 minus 21, which would be 0 squared over 21. Next, you're going to do 22 minus 29, which would be negative 7 squared over 29. Did I do that wrong? No, nope, that's right. 29. Next, I'm going to do 36 minus 29, which is <coughs> 7 squared over 29. And last, I'm going to do 29 minus 29, which would be 0 squared over 29. <coughs> that out, that's going to be your test value, your chi-squared test value. And according to my notes, that comes out to 8.046. Chi-squared is 8.046, which we notice is to the left of 9.21. So what am I going to say in step D? Do not reject the null. Exactly. So step D will be do not reject the null. So if we're not rejecting the null, then we would not be we would not be rejecting the claim. There's not enough evidence to reject the claim. So step E, there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that the proportion of people who will donate their organs is the same in all three neighborhoods. Not enough evidence to reject the claim that the portion of people who will donate organs is the same in all three neighborhoods. Any questions?